Hey, Number Crunchers, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about mathematics. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about integration, and more specifically, how to figure out the position of an object based on its velocity. Now, if you know the definition of velocity, it is the derivative of position. So it looks like this, mathematically. V equals dx dt. Change in position over change in velocity, or change in time, that's velocity. Okay, well, if I want to figure out x, looks like maybe something like this would work. Okay, I can do that. Remember, dx and dt are just variables. Now, they're variables with some specific properties, like we'll never actually know what they are because they're infinitesimal. But I can push them around, just like I push around any other variable. To make them go away, I have to integrate. So I can write that by simply multiplying through by dt and integrate. Now when I do that, I'm going to get x is the integral of v dt. All right. Now, if I leave it like this, that's called an indefinite integral. There's no uh, lower and upper integration boundaries. And so I'm going to get a c at the end, a constant of uh, uh, that offsets the, the solution. I'm going to need to solve for that based on something I know about the velocity. The other way I could do this is I could give it upper and lower boundaries. Let's say I went from 0 to 10 seconds. If I do this, I don't get a function anymore. I get a number. What I'm going to get is the distance my cart or my object travels from time equals 0 to time equals 10. Well, that's good. But let's say I want to be able to plot the result. I want x as a function of t. There's another way to do this. I can do that. Well, I can almost do that. I'll show you here in a second. If I'm going to do this, we're going to need a function to work with. So I'm going to erase this. And let's just, for example, say that we were observing a cart, or maybe there's an automated factory or something, and I've got a, an object moving. Let's say that velocity, as a function of time, is 1 over t plus 1. Okay? And if you want to know what that looks like, here's a plot. So you can see the velocity decreases over time, so it's breaking, it's decelerating. So if I want to figure out how far the object has traveled over that time, all i got to do is this. Plug in v of t in there. Now there's one problem here. Um, I'm trying to use the same letter for this two different things in the same equation. Hmm. It's more proper to make what's inside the equation here what's called a dummy variable, a variable that's going to disappear as soon as I substitute that in. I need one, so let's just call it a capital T. It's going to go away. I just need something other than little t. In, in the textbooks, sometimes you'll see the Greek letter tau. Well, tau, when I draw it on the board, looks too close to a little t. That doesn't, so this will be okay. So what, is, what do I do here? Well, the integral of 1 over t plus 1 is the natural log of t plus 1. So let's just, let's just do what the math says. There's the natural log, big T plus 1, evaluated um, from 0 to the letter T. Now, can I do that? Can I use a variable as an upper integration limit? Sure. What we're doing here is we're saying, well, that's going to be a number. I don't know what the number is yet. So let's just put a letter in there for now, and we'll figure out what the number is later. Well, that pretty much describes all of algebra, right? Just throw a letter in there where, where you, there's going, eventually going to be a number, and eventually we'll figure out what that number is. So that's what's going on here. Well, let me get my head out of your way. And let's go ahead and uh, apply those upper and lower limits and see what we get. Okay, so the first, the upper limit, is going to be t plus 1. Okay, so far so good. Minus the natural log of 0 plus 1. Well, what's the natural log of 1? It's 0. That's because e to the 0 is 1. So that goes to 0, and what we get is a natural log of t plus 1. That's now, 
let me write this out here. That's now position as a function of time. That's how position changes. We can plug any t value we want into there. Now, the way I wrote this out, this is really only valid when t is uh, greater than negative 1. If t goes to minus 1, that goes to infinity. So I'm assuming that this only works for positive time. In fact, I can even write this here. That's legitimate. That solves that problem. So there you go. All I did was integrate uh, using a lower bound as my starting point, an actual number, and the upper bound as a variable. So I, what I get out the other end is also a function. And just uh, before we close off here, here's what that plot looks like. All right. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.